All right, now we move forward to the city of San Antonio, the Water System Conservation Program, uh, and Karen Goos and uh, Dana Nichols are here. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Good afternoon. In the 1990s, San Antonio faced a drought combined with a regulatory crisis. Endangered species reside in springs that are fed by the same aquifer that sustains our water supply. And in the 90s, those were threatened by pumping during dry periods. Federal laws combined with lawsuits made it clear that our region needed some new answers to address our water supply management. One of the key decisions that was made during that time was to view water conservation as one component of our long-term water supply resources. With that choice came the need to plan water conservation projects with the same rigor that you would, that you would use to plan any infrastructure project. Since that time, we have made great strides in meeting our water supply goals, with conservation as one of the cornerstones of that planning. In 20 years, we have gained 30% more customers in our system, but we use the same amount of water to serve them. 30% more people served with the same amount of water. In 1993, we sent a goal to reduce water usage by 12% within 15 years, but we met that goal seven years ahead of schedule. Now we've set even more ambitious goals with the same intent of having our customers rave about their participation in our programs. We want them to say that their lives are better after they participated in water conservation. Not that they suffered, not that they had to deprive themselves, but that they're happier afterwards. During the next decade, we have to reduce our consumption by another 15% to meet our water supply needs. This means that we have to save 500 million gallons every single year and it has to be done in a long-term sustainable way. So how do we know we can do this? Why does it work? Well, we could tell you about a lot of our specific programs that we love, but we don't think that's really the most important thing today. What we think is most important is to share with you three key decisions that were made in San Antonio a long time ago that allowed the most important programs to evolve over the last decade and to be sustainable. The first important decision was that water conservation programs should all be analyzed for their cost and their benefit and then compared to water supply projects. What this means is we have a whole host of water conservation programs. Every single one has to compete against other programs and against water supply projects. If they don't work, they get dropped. And we constantly have to talk to the public about how when we spend one dollar on one of those programs, we save them seven long term. That brings us to our second point, which is broad community participation. We have to reach 1.2 million people with conservation messages to succeed. Early on, we used performance contracts with nonprofit organizations in order to reach out to a lot of those people. And our culture of conservation has grown. We work with a lot of nonprofit organizations. We work with citizen partners who include business leaders, nonprofit managers, and environmental activists. And that is our most effective means of expanding our programs. Our third important component is dedicated funding. Conservation programs in San Antonio come through our rate structure. But through the rates, they go into a restricted fund. Over the last 10 years, we've had changes in city council. We've had new mayors. We've had new CEOs of our water utility. We've had new staff in the conservation department. But through those 10 years, we've had dedicated conservation citizen volunteer input, and we've had dedicated funds. And so those program successes have continued well beyond the personal vision of any one person as a result. What we've also learned is that San Antonio is certainly not alone in its water challenges. The majority of states are going to experience a drought or a water supply challenge in the next decade. Dallas, Austin, and several of our smaller neighboring cities have approached us for help to determine how much of their future supply can come from conservation, and we're happy to get involved. But we think it's very telling that our financial staff at the utility actively support our model of trying to sell 500 million gallons less of our product every year. That sounds counterintuitive. Why would we do that? We do it because we can sell it as the smartest thing to do financially. It is our cheapest supply. It is also the smartest choice for our region so that we can prosper. It is certainly the smartest choice for the individual ratepayer, both for their quality of life and for their bottom line bill. 
But we don't want to forget that conservation is also the best thing to do environmentally. What started all this was an environmental issue. And conservation as a major solution does not pit the best economic choice against the environment. Conservation keeps the springs flowing for our neighbors and saves money for everyone. Okay, Thank you. Ed Dorn. Thank you. Voice from Austin. <laughs> uh, from Austin, we, we share the same aquifer, so I certainly appreciate your saving the water. Uh, I also noticed that uh, one of you has a former affiliation with Texas A&M, one of you has a former affiliation with the University of Texas, so I want to commend you for maintaining an ecumenical team. <laughs> As I understand it, uh, the city of San Antonio, like lots of other cities, has invested heavily uh, over the past decade or so in improvements in water structure, uh, putting it crudely, just replacing leaky pipes with new pipes. Yeah. To what extent are the savings that you record here uh, the results of those uh, infrastructure improvements as opposed to change uh, the program that we're considering today? Our most significant infrastructure improvements occurred in the 1980s. Um, San Antonio, like a lot of other cities, got a hold of some faulty black pipe, it's known as infamously, and it leaked significantly. And we changed those out by the end of the 80s. All of those leaks were taken care of. We also have four uh, early, very early on, first thing, we have four leak detection crews that actually go out every day and proactively look for leaks. Okay. As a percentage, I couldn't really tell you offhand. It's a, it's but not, it's, a, it's a significant way, well, but, and it's a good way for a program to get started, too, is but, kind of but, do as I say. Not. But are you saying that the real conservation you've been talking about is not attributable to better pipes? It is attributable to behavioral changes? Yes. The, what the, uh, from the time period that's been reflected in our reports, uh, yeah. that's attributable to programmatic issues. If we yeah. dropped the leak detection, we would certainly lose ground, though. Yeah. Could you help us understand, put our finger on, what is the central innovation here? Um, the central innovation, as we see it, is viewing conservation as a sustainable long-term supply. Most other cities will not put it into their long-term supply plan. They see it as a feel-good measure. Um, something that they'll do more as a PR issue, but they will not be convinced, or as a drought measure, but they are not convinced that, that you can sustain over a decade or over 20 years enough of a sustainable reduction that you can count on this as part of your supply. Uh, we contend that if you fund it long term and if you involve the community long term, yes, you can. Uh, our numbers show that that is possible. David Osborne. Um, your data says that up to 50% of water consumption in the summer is from irrigating landscapes, yes. lawns. Um, what are the, I know that's politically difficult to change, but it seems uh, incredibly important. Mm -hmm. What are the odds that you're going to be able to, through ordinance or some other method, um, limit that? Well, we have changed it a lot. Um, we just came through a, a very nasty drought in San Antonio, um, and we measure things in gallons per capita. We apologize for the jargon, but we were at 136 gallons per capita, all the water divided by all the people, during a very bad drought year. When we go back to our last drought year, we were at about 145 during a this bad drought day. year. Yes. Yeah, all the water divided by all the people. That in takes into account leaks, by the way. In leaks in the system. That's why we like that metric. <laughs> um, but uh, we are making strides in reducing our peak demand, reducing the amount using outside, used outside, but it is a constant education issue. Um, we cannot give up on that and say it's done. Can I, can I follow up? Sure. Um, but other jurisdictions would say, well, we have to do more than educate. We have to legislate, and we have to either put a higher fee on uh, out, increased use or ban certain kinds of use? Well, my comment to them, we, we've had our neighbors in Austin invited us to talk to them about their conservation efforts. They're doing a great job of stepping them up. And um, they said, well, people won't do this here the way they do it in San Antonio. Of course they will. But you can't just wait until you're in a drought and then expect everybody to be excited about it. Um, when we were in drought, 12,000 people called in to alert us to water waste or leaks because all the time it's part of our conservation ethic 
and it's built up over years. And so there has to be the constant education, the constant people being behind it. Then you can also have rules about water waste. Then when you're in a drought, you can ask people to step it up and they will do it. And they will do it without a huge amount of heartburn. Not everybody, it's never fun to be in a drought, but people will comply much more readily with that difficult situation if conservation has been part of the ethic of the community all along. Carl? It, and I must say, just be brief on both sides. I yeah. didn't, that sign just went up. Water consumption per capita has been dropping uh, all over the country. Would you happen to know how San Antonio stacks up against a national uh, benchmark in the d decline in water consumption or in terms of other cities? Yeah, for example, we have information about New York has cut its per capita water consumption by a third since 1980. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to, we try to look at Southwest. Um, other southwest communities. Um, the community that's done extremely well in addition to San Antonio would be El Paso. Um, but uh, other than El Paso, we don't know that anyone's done as well at dropping their per capita at quite as dramatically as San Antonio. Um, Dallas is at about 240 uh, as one of our near neighbors. Um, some of our close suburbs that are just adjacent to San Antonio and not in our conservation programs are also at about 240. And you're this at is one. all 136. So it's, uh, it, it is quite a dramatic um, differential. All right. Thank you both very much. Thank you.